this is our mini oppa valve on our energy monitoring gauge. Now we currently are using still a link 10 and I know that at this time these are no longer made but I've looked online and I see that there are a number of the exact same type of gauge available for any boat. Jill and I have talked many times about what works and what doesn't work aboard Guinevere for live aboard, for long-term cruising, for general use. Every time that we've discussed the matter, two things have come out head and shoulders above all the others of what we feel we could not live on a boat without ever again. And one of those two things is this energy monitoring system. Now I know a whole lot of people will talk about, oh well, I made an energy budget and I know that my refrigerator runs for X number of minutes per day and it uses X number and my uh, VHF radio uses this and my nav uh, uh, chart plotter or GPS or this or that and you've made up this great long list and that's absolutely superb because you really do need that to size your energy generation needs in proportion to your usage needs but for just downright basic knowing what's going on you can't beat one of these energy monitoring gauges uh, suppose you go hot weather tropics your refrigerator runs more than it did before how do you know that unless you're sitting there with a stopwatch timing it during the day you don't so one of these gauges is pretty much mandatory to have so let's go over just a little bit about our gauge uh, it's called a link 10 but uh, as I said, there are a number of them that will fit the bill. Ours has four LEDs across the top. You'll see three are lit. That means I've been using about 25% of my battery capacity right now. Before you get started with the gauge, I have to tell you the best thing we did was buy the wire harness that comes with the gauge. Saves you a lot of problems. Uh, you might uh, you might save yourself uh, you know fifteen or twenty dollars if if it doesn't come with it but believe me the aggravation in wiring it will uh, just buy buy the harness that goes with it install it per the directions before you need it and then the next thing to do is set the gauge to set the gauge uh, you go through the manual and you tell the gauge how many amp hours from the battery bank or battery that you're drawing from has in it. Okay, in my case, I have three Group 31 AGM batteries for a total of 315 amp hours. Now, I can tell this gauge that I have 315 amp hours. Actually, I can only tell it 310 because it doesn't get that fine once you're over 300 on this particular gauge. And what that will do will tell me that uh, I've used 25% of it, 50% of it, 75% of it, and all the way down. For any type of battery that you're likely to have, meaning lead acid or gel cell, you do not want to drop the battery usage below 50% of its capacity. To do so, will damage the battery if you do it more than a few times. I've done it, not willingly, but when I was in a problem and I needed to. Uh, you know, it won't kill it the first time, but the, the fewer times you do that, the longer your batteries will last. What I've done, or what I do, is I set the gauge and I tell it that I only have 150 amp hours worth of battery capacity. That will tell me that these gauges, uh, these LEDs, 
when that last one starts to turn red, I know I need to recharge the batteries. Had I not told it that, had I told it 300 amp hours, I'd be looking for this center one to turn dark and I could overshoot and not want to. So that's my first, uh, first hint that you want to do. This is the way we normally have the gauge uh, for ourselves. Uh, it's set up so that if it's not touched or used, uh, just the LEDs are showing because that draws very little power. Uh, when I want to see more detailed information, I push the button. Okay, I've currently used 54.1 amp hours of battery usage. Now that's been over three days. Um, I'm, I'm running a uh, Engels refrigeration unit which uses very little power, uh, lights and such, very little power. I have disconnected my solar panel so that we get a true reading on this gauge right now. You'll see this amp hour usage is highlighted and that tells me that I'm reading amp hours used. Minus means I'm using them plus or nothing means that they're being used. Let me shut off the refrigeration right now. Okay, if I press the select button it'll go to time And under time, it's telling me that if I continue to use my batteries at the rate that I've been using them at, I have 191.2 hours left before I absolutely need to charge the batteries. You can, in setting this gauge, you can tell it um, average battery use over 5 minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, uh, I try to average it over a long period of time because different things are turning on and off when you're living aboard a boat at different times. I hit it again. I go to volts. My batteries currently are at 12.50, 12. Point, between 12.45 and 12.55 volts. Okay. I've heard a whole lot of people talk about, oh, it's easy, you just read the battery voltage. Well, to read a true battery voltage, you've got to let the battery set for an hour to equalize across before you read the voltage and you get a meaningful reading from it. Now, I don't know about you, but when we live aboard and we're out there all the time, there's no way I can shut everything off, let the batteries sit for an hour or two, and read a battery voltage. You know, I want, if the sun's out, I want to be charging the batteries. If the sun's not out, I'm using other things that uses the power. So just reading voltage is, is far less important. That's amps. Right now, we're doing zero in, zero out. As I said, I've got the solar panels disconnected and I've got the uh, refrigeration turned off and uh, uh, no draws drawing. That's basically how this gauge is. Before we got this gauge, I would follow Jill around and turn off lights and she'd go crazy and say, I'm not living in a cave, this is our house. When I want a light, I want to turn on a light. Absolutely agree. What's, what's really nice now is we've changed mostly to LED lights, so even when I'm using them, uh, we're not drawing much power. Uh, let's see. Uh, cabin lights, if I turn that on, and I turn on an overhead, you can see that LED is drawing less than 0.1 amp hour. So we can leave that light on for a long time and not worry about battery power. The other thing that this is extremely valuable for is reading if you have faults in your electrical system. I have everything turned off. If I was reading, if I took this and went to uh, amps right now, and I'm reading something in a negative, I know that I've got a short somewhere in the system. Something is drawing something. I know that if I turn on my refrigeration, I'm now using amps. Now, the Ingalls is right now only drawing 2.5 amps running. So, 
I know that it's running at specifications. I turn it off and it goes to zero. This is one of the best things. I don't have to follow Jill. She doesn't have to follow me. A quick look up from anywhere in the boat. We see these LEDs on and I know where I'm sitting power wise. She doesn't have to ask me, do we need to charge the batteries? How are they doing? She doesn't have to be worried about it. Are the nav lights going to light because we've got enough power left? The other good thing about these gauges is when you're charging a battery, you put in an amp hour. doesn't mean you're going to get a full amp hour back out. This has a computer in it, a little computer brain in it, that says, oh, for every one point something amps that I put in, I get one out. And it remembers how I've been using amps and how much, and it adjusts that equation so that as the batteries get a little older, a little more in time, it still maintains the correct one point something in to get one out. And so this, above all other things, is one of the top two items that we really love to have aboard our boat and wouldn't have another vote without one.